I built my career on sensing, and it's really uh, great to see all the different applications of, of sensing. And we've come a long, long way, right? So if we think about how we used to measure behavior in the wild, and some uh, was mentioned before that the, it was pen and paper, and to, in behavior health, it still exists. But then we graduated to using smartphones as a means to pen and paper, right? You're still journaling and logging, and there's the kind of notion of the ecological momentary assessment. You fill it out as you go. But right now, we can really say that sensing is invisible. It's, it's embedded in our phone. It's embedded in our environment. It's embedded in our body. Uh, so we have really made huge advances in, in sensing. And we can get pretty much every aspect of our behavior, our physical activity, our sleep, our social activity, what we're consuming, how we move around, our mood, and most of this only from smartphone alone. And if you add other kind of wearables and IoT and even implantables, you can get a lot more detail and resolution in all of these behavior. But although I've done kind of most of my work in, in sensing, I've been increasingly interested in thinking about what next? What do we do with it? And I think we've done a very, very poor job in actually behavior change. And uh, I think um, kind of one of the previous speakers mentioned that behavior change is hard. And I would say behavior change technologies that we have built are appalling. Right? They expect a lot from us. They expect us to track multiple aspects of our behavior. They ex expect us to set goals in multiple aspects of our behavior and then be able to achieve that while we go about our lives. So it's no wonder it fails. So one of the things that we've been kind of thinking about, how can we tie sensing to intervention in a, in a more invisible way? Can we get there? So we want to move away from reliance on like, ev not everyone's driven by challenge and motivation and achievement. And particularly one area that I work on and you've also seen is mental health. When someone is in depth of depression, they are not driven by these, these aspects that we may thrive on in our kind of um, professional lives. So what we are working on now is can we design technologies that do not require conscious awareness to be effective. And I think we have a lot to learn from what we know from neuroscience, from psychology, and just how humans behave and respond to their own behavior and even bodily signal. So I want to give you two examples. One was a system that we built called Emotion Check, which continuously looks at our um, stress and anxiety level. We're looking at heart rate and other measures as well. And try to give us awareness of it in a way to actually change our own perception and also our reaction to stress and anxiety. So there is this whole notion in also psychology called interceptive awareness. People are aware of their bodily signal. And sometimes there's research also shows that people who are more aware tend to be more anxiety prone. So what did we do? So let's imagine that you have continuous heart rate sensing, and now with Apple Watch or any watch, you can also continuously give feedback. What if we give feedback about your stress and anxiety level? So here, your heart is beating fast, and, and you're at, uh, your kind of watch can vibrate. But what if we actually change that? What if we tell you that actually the feedback slows your heart rate down? What happens? So some interesting things happen. What we saw that you can, your self-perception of anxiety can be changed based on whether we give faster or slower feedback. Not only that, you actually see physiological changes. Your heart rate variability changes based on your awareness or perception of it. And very, very subtle. So most people actually don't even notice it. And the thing that we are most excited about, it actually changes performance. This is performance in the math test. We did uh, tests with people with math anxiety. They perform better. And one of the reasons why we are excited about this is that we want to not have health and wellness as a carve out. We want it embedded in our lives as we do things. So we want to actually merge it with our everyday life and things, our goals that we have. And I'm going to kind of 
give a similar example that we did actually manipulating voice. We can actually give a perception your voice is calmer than it is. And what we saw that in interpersonal conflict, we can actually change anxiety level and also physiological changes and people's um, perception of those interaction. So one of the things that I often kind of like to say that there is a huge opportunity of sensing tied to intervention to actually edit the stories of our lives so that we can make uh, behavior change embedded in real time as we carry out our life and not as a separate um, kind of carve out. Thank you.